So, dude, you're in, you're in Go Abundance, right? Yes. Help. Yeah, for I actually just re-upped for my third year, so it's been two full years. That's awesome. Awesome. So for those for those people who might be jumping on, uh, I know I know Mike. We've actually never talked. I think it's our first time chatting. But we, um, Mike and I are part of the same mastermind. So you've been in the mastermind three years. It's a mastermind we call Go Abundance. Uh, they call themselves the tribe of healthy, wealthy, generous men who choose to lead epic lives. And it's just people that support each other, encourage each other. So so Mike, I actually joined Go Abundance back in I think it was 2015, and when it was like 40 members, and they've grown to like 800 and some members now so I'm, I'm not nearly as like connected as i was when i first started like i did all the cool trips and everything with them which is cool because i titled this live and i really want to pick your brain man on like you've scaled your real estate portfolio which is awesome but then you've also done it in a way where like you tra you can travel and you don't have to always be there for it so i think that's really a really a cool thing but um yeah man good to meet you yeah absolutely man yeah you've been you're like an og since 2015 because i think the thing only started what 2013 or so yeah um, so you're, you're pretty early on in it. I mean, it's funny though, even from when I started, as I joined back in 2021, it's like doubled since then. It's pretty crazy. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They put a big focus on growth and, and, and some guys don't like that, but I think ultimately it's good. Like it's been really cool to see go abundance grow and expand. And if it's a good thing for some people, why is it not a good thing for a bunch of people? Right. That's kind of how I think about it. Yeah. And people are, but, people are um, really like change regardless. So you gotta, you gotta do what you're going to do. But. So dude, tell us, Tell us, like, what's your focus in real estate right now? Like, obviously, I follow you on Instagram. I've seen your stuff. You've scaled a real estate portfolio. I think you've scaled like a twelve or thirteen million dollar real estate portfolio, which is pretty badass. And now you're, it's in a, you've done it in a way that allows you to like travel and live the life that you want. Which, you know, I don't think anybody like gets into real estate like just to like be in real estate. I think people get into real estate for for freedom or something that they want. So I'm curious, kind of like, what's your focus is in real estate? Like, what's your niche, man? Yeah, so my, my niche is as a basically an off-market deal finder, right? So um, most of my success has come through wholesaling, um, whether we are wholesaling for assignment fees or we are you know, just using the methodology of wholesaling to get discounted properties, um, you know, just be able to stretch our money a little bit further. So when, you know, you, when I first started... Could you, could you just define, could you define wholesaling? I know that's a basic question. Could you define wholesaling for like someone who's maybe brand new to real estate, either watching this now or watching this later when we post yeah. it? So basically wholesaling is the art of finding discounted real estate deals, right? And you know, people call it wholesaling because it's just like if you were to buy, you know, some sort of product on wholesale, right? You're buying like a larger right. quantity at a better price. Same concept can go with real estate as well. Right. Um so, you know, basically it's learning not only how to like find them, but also identify opportunities, how to work with sellers, how to negotiate all the situations that people get themselves into. Because most of the people that we work with that are willing to sell the large asset they own at a discount have some sort of distress. Right. Whether that's, you know, personal distress, they're getting divorced, they have financial distress, they have liens on their property, they're facing pre foreclosure, things like that. Property is a major fixer upper, you name it. Those are kind Kind of the situations that lead to people making that decision to basically take you know a large cut of their equity right um and so it's the wholesaling is the special of learning how to find those people and how to assist them with whatever they're dealing that's with. that's cool yeah. dude i've never actually i've never actually heard it put that way but i really love that it's the art of finding discounted like off-market deals yeah and it is an art man i think it i think art is a good word for it because it's not like like there's so many ways to do and it's not a, it's not that's not something like that's not, I specialize in co-living, like co-living, which is basically like a shared housing rent by the room. That's the, that's the, you know, new market that I'm really focused on right now. But I've always thought there's a, there would be a beautiful merging of like people who want to find co-living deals, which are cash flowing like three, four K net a month. A lot of times in these homes, cause they're just, you know, you're renting eight rooms out of a house when no, normally I'd rent for two grand and you're renting it for six or seven grand cause it's shared housing and you're bringing these people together. But I've always thought there was a cool merging of like what you're doing in co-living. So I guess my question for you would be like, do you only do this for yourself in your market or are you doing this for other people outside of your market? And just like, how do you do it? Like, what is your basic strategy on how? Yeah. How do you find these discounted deals? Yeah. So, so um, I mean, we find them through a bunch of different methods, right? So, um, you know, it all starts with pulling public data so we can go and people have a lot of publicly recorded issues out there right so it's very easy in most places to find people that have bankruptcies liens things like that right. you know we use a system called upstream 
to pull most of our data and you can get public lists there for pretty much everything. And then we do different forms of outreach through, um, you know, mostly direct mail. That's kind of our bread and butter. We like the direct mail method of marketing because people choose to engage with you. So it's an inbound lead versus things like cold calling and SMS, which is an outbound lead. And, you know, you're always hitting people up when they're at their daughter's ballet practice or they're right. driving to work, or they're, you know, eating dinner and you're intruding on their day versus right. mail, even though it's more expensive, I guess, per contact, it is a better conversation. So we do right. a ton of direct mail and then how our business and direct mail, and direct yeah. mail is you just like blasting out like 10,000 letters and then on that letter, like your phone number's there and you're, you're just trying to get people to call you to say, Hey, I don't want to use a real letter. I, I, but I am interested in selling my home kind of thing. That's, that's the, that's the strategy, right? Like fundamentally, right? Like there's a stra there's a core strategy behind it. You know, if you just like send out a bunch of random stuff that like is cheap and like looks like a tabloid, you're not going to get a lot of right. action with that. You know, like to be successful with it, it's just like any other business like this. Cause like at, at its core, wholesaling is a marketing and sales business. Right. With real estate right. being the collateral, the way that you make money, it's not like a real estate business. Whereas, like I would say, co-living is, um, let's say, a services business, but it also depends on like the real estate a little bit more. Ours doesn't. It really just depends on how you can find the opportunities and how you can help other people more so than the physical asset yeah. where we make our money. Um, and so, like you know, you have to have a brand behind it. You have to have a process. You have to show that you're credible. Um, and where a lot of people get stuck is they try to just like spend send out the cheapest stuff they can find to get suckers on the hook pretty much. Right? right. But if you go and you have a strong brand presence, you have like a message, you have a story that you can tell people, you will get a lot more traction with your mail. Um, and so like how we do it, we have like a six month sequence that we send that starts with like branded postcards, kind of introduce us and we do these letters that have our value proposition. And, um, you know, we just have a different, like six month cycle that we run through that's like builds out our, our story for our company. So has, um, has most of the deals that you've bought to build your $12 million portfolio, have they been all off market? Yes. Yeah, so we, we've done right. 300, 326 transactions um, since the beginning of 2020. And uh, every single one of those has been off market. Dude, that's badass. That's a hundred percent. This is like something I'm super interested in right now. Cause like what's great about co living is you can find great deals that cash flow on market. Mm -hmm. Like that's, in, that's great, right? Like you cannot do that in the single family world. It's hard to do that in almost any other category of real estate. Right. But I think that if someone like, like this skill set, if, if you could merge these two things, you could, you could get even find better deals. So do you do this for other people in other markets or no, you're just doing this in your market? Yeah. yeah so we have like our local market that we do. And then how we've chosen to scale this business is we actually have what we call our partnership program. Um, where we run the entire operation people for, for people in their markets. Um, and you know, what it looks like is you are the market expert, so You're in charge of kind of the disposition, helping us underwrite, but we actually run the entire marketing, the entire sales system. We manage the sales staff. We do the entire back end process up to the point where we actually sign the contract with our company. Wow. And then we assign it to you for a, um, like a fixed fee of just $5,000. And then yeah. you can go and do whatever you want with it. You can close in the property, you can flip it, you can reassign it to somebody else. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it's like our way of scaling this because as we started to go into more and more areas, the biggest challenge we were into was knowing local demographics, right. you know, neighborhoods, things like that, when making connections with local investors. So what kind of came around through a few different iterations is we can have people that are raising their hand and want to be that person we can do the part that we're good at, which is the marketing and the sales, and then they can be the right. beneficiary for bench for basically covering the cost and being able to work with us. Yeah. So let me give you let me give you like a co living perfect home buy box, and you could just tell me if you think you could actually do this in my market, Charlotte, North Carolina, or where where are you actually? What what market are you in? I'm in Spokane, Washington. Spokane, so Washington. State. Washington. Okay. So yes, let me, know, let me you know if you could do this in say Charlotte, North Carolina, or another town called Asheville. I don't know if not ever heard of you. Uh, Asheville, North Carolina is another market that we're in. Uh, smaller town, but um, is is kind of a actually this this town Asheville reminds me a lot of uh, like some towns in Washington. Yeah. Just the like the 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 vibe that it's got going on. But um, so a perf a perfect buy box with buy box for co living would be like. Anything bigger than twenty, like any home bigger than twenty five hundred square feet, because twenty five hundred square feet allows us gonna, is going to allow us to have at least eight bedrooms in it. Mm -hmm. It needs to be non HOA. 
Um, newer than 1970 preferred. Um, and, um, and it has to have like a certain amount of parking. Like that's, that's just kind of a, a thing that we have to be able to look at on Google earth and say, Hey, there's like people could park around it. Cause in Charlotte, you just have to have, everybody's got to have parking right for that. So is that, that, that's, that's basically, I mean, I could go through a few more nuances, but if I were to say, Hey, I want to, and then it can be like anywhere in the city of Charlotte or even like five miles outside of our big, huge, like 485 highway that goes around the whole city. Is that something you could plug in and help me find off market properties for, from, for myself and my clients? Yeah. I mean, that's all pretty standard stuff, right? Like the, the one thing that we would just need to figure out how to more um, tangibly identify is like the parking situation and what exactly right. that means. But I mean, age of house, size of house, type of property, you know, all that sort of stuff is very simple to find. Dude. Um, so, you know, and we've, we've done specific stuff like that with people. Where it does get tricky is when people are looking for, um, you know, things that have like certain like like road access, like people trying to do land right. developments and that sort of stuff because it's very hard to find that recorded anywhere. Right. Um, but everything that you like laid out is very – specific to the real estate so that would be no problem at all dude that's awesome hey scotty's scotty's got a question for you man i think this is great he says where can we learn more about all your different services and prices yeah. for what yeah. you do yeah so i mean you can hit me up on instagram here at mike underscore invest that's a that's one of the easiest ways you can hop on a quick call um we do have some basic outline on my uh podcast website collecting these podcast.com um, we are, it is in the process of being updated with just some of the, the new additions that we have with things. So if you went on there like right now, it's not fully accurate. Um, so if you want like the true up to date, hit me up on Instagram and we can have a quick call. Dude, that's awesome. Well, cool, man. I know we just wanted to hop on here for a few minutes. Um, I love what you're doing. I think it's awesome. I think there's a whole world out there. I was just on a call earlier today with someone that does a lot of subjects to type um, purchases. And I was just telling her, I was like, look, it's like, this is a, that's a, there's a whole world to that that I'm excited to dive into and maybe even create partnerships like, like with you where I can be finding deals for my clients, mm -hmm. you know, finding these co-living properties on market is great. Super easy to do. That's super easy to do. But I think off market stuff could even be better deals and we get like just better cash flow even overall. So, um, let's, uh, let's, let's connect on that. Let's connect on that and maybe do a trial run on it if you're, if you're interested. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Let's do it. I like it. Cool. Cool. Brother. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for coming on to, to chat a little bit. What's, um, oh, you know, I did want to pick your brain on that one more thing real fast. Like, are you, you, one thing I've seen on your Instagram is that you're big on like travel, like setting up your business where you don't have to be there. Like what's, what's, what's maybe one tip for someone listening to this that you would say for someone who wants to build a company or wants to, wants to retire through real estate, you know, and have that passive, as David Green says, that passive ish income, you're still looking at it. It's still there. What's, what's maybe one or two, what, what advice do you have for someone in that situation? Build your business with the intention for it to be a virtual business from the start. Even if you're a lo local business, so many like real estate investors, if they're working locally, they try, they treat it like they're there. If you treat it as if you're doing it across the country from the very beginning, it's very, very easy to have the freedom to travel and do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, that's where yeah, I think that's probably the number one thing that you can do. And that's just, you know, comes down to how you set up your communication systems, how you analyze opportunities, having like sort of people in place to do that instead of doing it yourself um, and being very intentional with that from the start. That makes yeah. it easier than starting local and then trying to implement that later. Yeah. Dude, this is why I tell people like uh, I work with a lot of new investors and coaching them to get into the co-living real estate market. And this is why I tell people some people times people will be like, well, no, I want to invest like in my own backyard. I want to invest in my own city. And that's a great idea sometimes. But a lot of times their reasoning for that is because they're like, well, then like if something happens, I can go over there right away. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's also a lot of power when you invest out of state, as long as, of course, you have a team that you trust. And like, there's a lot of trust that's involved there. But there's just there's a lot of power in investing where like you can't just drive over there when the toilet breaks. <laughs> like you have to have a team. You have to set this up as a business. Like, OK, who's going to handle the emergency calls? Who's going to handle when tenants are, are, are not doing what they should do or not paying? Like there's some power to this like distance investing where you have to figure some shit out. Yeah. Um, in order to actually invest in it. it has to be set up more like you're saying it has to be set up more like a virtual business to give you more freedom. And so that way you're not just giving yourself another job 
you're actually investing in real estate passive passive ishly yeah. right because you still need to look at the numbers you still need to go check up on your properties like there's no there's no such thing as true like just passive income in my opinion like you still have to look at it yeah. and you want to look at even robert kiyosaki was like passive income should be something that you spend one hour or less a week mm -hmm. on but you're still spending an hour a week on it right you're still yeah. like checking in on it and I think that's where some people go wrong is they think, well, I'll just do it and I'll never look at it again. It's like, no, you got to look at it. So especially in the real estate, the real estate world. So yeah, man, I totally, I love that. That's a, that's a great, that's a great thought of just, okay, you're going to set this up from the beginning. You begin with the end in mind. This is going to be a virtual business. I'm not trying to create another job for myself. And exactly. it sounds like you've done a, sounds like you've done a great job of that with, with what, uh, with what, with your business. Yeah, and then even on the active side of it too, right? So you have the passive income from rental properties, which is very easy to make that way because there's so many different people that provide those services. But if you are more intentional about doing it with your active business, I mean, there's no reason that you can't be wholesaling and flipping houses from anywhere in the world. Um, it just, it, it's a limiting belief that people have that you need to be local in order to do it. And it does make it easier, right? That's one of the reasons we started the partnership program is it's hard to establish those relationships. Um, but like we started doing stuff virtually here locally honestly due to covid because we right. hadn't had to in washington state we had pretty strict lockdown rules and everything yeah. um yeah. but we just carried those same policies and practices moving forward and now you know i've signed for deals in four different continents like you know it's like not right. that hard you can use mobile notaries you know you can use team members to go and like be the person on site um the entire process of it can be done virtually and in fact if you want to have the ability be location independent. That's kind of what you need to do. That's great, man. I love it. That's so great. Cool. Well, there you go, guys. Being able to sign for deals and make deals happen while you're in a, a continent away. Yeah. That's pretty badass, brother. Well, hey, Mike, uh, good, to, good to chat with you a little bit. We'll connect more on the, uh, the off-market deal stuff. That's actually something I'd like to get into and help support what I'm doing in the co-living world. So I appreciate you sharing about that. Absolutely, man. Appreciate the time. Thanks for having me on.